Test, test, test. So yeah, looks like I'm good. Okay. I'm Phil Wyman, and this is the Wild Theology Podcast, where the world, the humans in it, and God are all wilder than we've been told. That's your intro. So, you'll get philosophy and theology and crazy stories that come from 30 years of pastoring, 20 years of festival work, whatever, and the uh, mud and blood of wrestling with the living in the spaces angels fear to tread. Ooh, trying to sound interesting, are we? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you think you got something to say? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the problem, Dimwit. Look, I'm a lot smarter than you think. Yeah, you tied your shoes this morning. Whatever. We're, We're Phil Wyman, Wyman, and this is Wild Theology, where you get to argue with your own ideas. And lose. That's the point. If you would like to support this podcast, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash Phil Wyman. I'm in Brownwood, Texas, at the home of Paul and Joy Burwell, and we just got back from an event called Unbroken Spring, which is a regional Burning Man event. So this is a little bit of discussion about what happened there and what it's like for Christians to hang out at Burning Man or Burning Man events. It's like this is like year number two at UBS, right? Mm-hmm. And well, plus the Playa Pity Party. Yeah. And the Playa Pity Party, but year number one, it was first burn for you guys, and um, a lot of people get really nervous about going to a Burning Man type of event. We did I was yeah. Were you? We did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. We uh, we both. Woke up when you were supposed to be on your way. I mean, you were on your way back from Austin. And we woke up with a case of the dreads. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't have and dreads we both because said, I'm bald. <laughs> yeah. And I said, if Phil has trouble with that thing and can't make it, we're not going. We're not going because I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to conduct myself. It's something like that. And, uh, you know, we'd had those dreads before, like maybe when we went to Africa. And I don't know that streams really gave them to us, you know, before we... But this was just a case we both woke up and we were on the same page. We felt sick. Like, Oh, wow, yeah. Are we doing the right thing? Sure, sure. Well, I remember he saying to me, well, there's a burn. And it's just six miles from our house. You should go. <laughs> and, I, and I purposely said, absolutely, we are going. <laughs> is how I responded. I was that, like. That was probably funny. Joy that told you that because y'all were the ones commuting. I mean, Elise got the link sent to you. I wouldn't have told him, though, he should go. I wouldn't have done ah, that. It maybe would have it been you. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure it would have been it you. It fits more with me. Yeah, I don't think I would have done that. <laughs> Yeah, and my response was yes. We are going. <laughs> so, um, but now, so what is it about? Is it what is it what you heard about Burning Man that made it like a very nervous thing to consider? You know, going we, to a regional for the first time. We knew that we we had had an invite to Burning Man back when we got out of streams because they were. You know, there was a crew that was going, and someone said, you know, you guys could go. You've got to get approved or whatever. And, well, financially and all that, we thought there's no way. You yeah. know, we're brokered in the Ten Commandments now, so. We were also pretty burned out at that point. Yeah. So the idea of trying that wasn't really up for yeah. much discussion. So, But we knew that it was clothing optional, and we had heard the stories and all of this, and we, we thought it was cool. But, you know, when it got down to where the rubber meets the road, it was a different story. <laughs> it's like, wow, what, what are we going to do? I mean, we just didn't know. It was the fear of the unknown, and then, you know, you'd been having trouble with Priscilla. and <laughs> Priscilla the moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's really funny whenever I talk about Priscilla, people go, hmm? And I play with it all the time because I go, yeah, Priscilla's... Um, Trevor with her full time, and she's 22, 
feet long. <laughs> well, sometimes she's 28 years old. <laughs> sometimes she's 28 years old, yeah. That always yep. makes people laugh. But, but you know, yeah, yeah, there was the problem. We woke there. up and we just kind of had the sweats. And I said, how are you feeling? You know, and she's like, not kinda good. I pit in my stomach like, oh. My I said, God. me either. And I said, if, if Phil has trouble and is going to be delayed, I said, I don't mind losing my ticket. The money, you know. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so then after, during and after that first year, how was it like different? At, once you got there and you're experiencing it and then you came back from it, what, or what was the changing point? Like, well, going, I think, going I think to the breaking, their little Wednesday evening church no, meeting or no. their. Breaking the ice, I guess. You know, we went out there to the work day, and that helped a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then getting there and seeing that a lot of people were clothed <laughs> right right off the bat. And, uh, you know, it's like, okay. I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect, but we just thought, we'll, we'll follow your lead, you know. Right. You've been to these, and you'll show us how to act or how to behave, and... You know, some of the things you said were like, don't feel any pressure to do anything, just just be. Right. You know, just, yeah. you've got the Spirit of God <clears throat> inside, so just be. Just be a presence there. And, you know, working with the homeless, we've been around broken people before, so we thought, okay, we'll just go do like we do when we feed people and talk with them, get to know them, and you know, little by little, we had to get adjusted to things, you know, right there at first. But it seemed like it wasn't the big, scary monster that we thought, yeah, you know, that our minds had, had fabricated. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it was pretty easy to, uh, to visit with people and be kind to them and, you know, do favors, help people and all of that. So the, the first one helped out a lot that doesn't explain where we got the courage to attend the second thing <laughs> without you <laughs> I know why I mean for me the reason was Jerry invited us personally hmm. you know it was his place and yeah. we already knew some people you know right. so that to me was not such a big issue and then we knew to go on and go to the work days and so, you know, I mean, and, when, and you know, when you do that, then people think, okay, you know, they're trying to be part of this. I mean, what I see is they don't have the hoops or the, the what's the word, the critiquing going on that we experience a lot of times in church. There's not the hoops there. Yeah, the pressure it's to perform. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. They were accepting. They really were. Things that we did were noticed, not that we were looking for notice, right. but they appreciated things that we did. It's like, okay. Uh, whatever we've done, they need around here. <laughs> no pressure to conform. You said it. Somebody said it that I had three things down that I remember at the first, and it was there was no discernible checklist of hoops to jump through, no excessive scrutiny, and no pressure to conform. To oh my gosh, that's a great list of things okay. that happened at Burns. Yeah. That's, so you, but you know it's true. Again? I, um, need, I, need I wrote like, it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ought to. Okay. I, I'm going to want you to send that to me because that is such a good little okay. set of statements. Okay. So it's. Another positive point is there's been no discernible checklist of hoops to jump through, no excessive scrutiny, and no pressure to conform to anything. <laughs> wow. It, it, doesn't it seem sometimes like the burner community understands what we call fellowship in mm -hmm. Christian circles better than we do. Mm -hmm. Both both of us have so. seen that, that they, uh, in a strange way, even with all the carnal stuff, they, they're still more at ease with each other because there's not, they're not allowed to judge or, or shame. Definitely and, uh, no, you know, the church certainly, the ones we've been around, reserves the right to shame. <laughs> <laughs> I reserve the right to to heap guilt upon you. Yes. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. That's and we took it on and, you know, acted however, however they wanted us to act when you're guilty. But <laughs> the, these folks were not like that. <laughs> they oh. were accepting and, uh, yeah, I'm sure they thought we were strange. Probably still you know? do. 
to send it. Well, I'm, I'm certain right. that they do. They, uh, well, strangeness is the order of the day when you have radical self-expression as a <laughs> That's true. primary That's true. behavioral activity of your, <laughs> your group. Um, strangeness is celebrated. <laughs> but, but I don't know where we came up with let's get this 10 by 20 tent, let's take our 60 cup coffee thing but between the first burn and that. Well, we, I know we were looking for 10 by 10 and then I was just thinking, we were looking and I said it'd be nice if we could have two of them because I thought the extra space would be nice to have the covered mm -hmm. space because Phil wasn't going to be there, you know. And so then we found the oh, tent. So you did the 10 by 20 tent and the at, coffee at the Playa Pity yes, Party we did. back in yes. yeah. uh, September, was it? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I, I can't explain the leap from being so scared that if you had a flat, we weren't going <laughs> to the barn. Well, to going yeah that much further and faster. I made friends. I really did. I mean, I made friends. They weren't just contacts on Facebook. I mean, they were people that we began to develop a relationship with. That I did personally. I mean, that was the point for me. So, I mean, Debbie had been a really good first start. I know she. You're not taping this, are you? Absolutely. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, she had been a first. Oh, that did. <laughs> she had been a first, you know, a yeah. great start. And, and it just. Um, but still, it was a pretty big leap. It was. But to it was think that we would be accepted with our. Right. All of our paraphernalia, not drug, but coffee and mm -hmm. bananas, boiled eggs, whatever. <laughs> and uh, fans, chairs. Mm -hmm. And. You know, saw some amazing things there. I've, I've never sat with uh, fabric-free people <laughs> drinking coffee for breakfast and have the subject of Jesus come up, brought up by them. That's true. Brought up by them, not me. Right, right. Just sitting there drinking coffee, and there's we uh, someone started talking about being persecuted for doing something right and being banned for that, and then saying that's what happened to me at church and that's what that's actually what happened to Jesus. And I said that is what happened to Jesus. Wow. Big, big time. Yeah. Yeah yeah. And that that was it. It just that thought and then we went on. Right. So yeah. there there was some acceleration like she said there was the the planting of developing some relationships with some of these women. And on uh, Facebook or whatever, mm -hmm. maybe private message, and then uh, I don't know. I bought a generator. I bought <laughs> yeah. So, so, so here was my perspective of it being so far away. So we did that. We did the first UBS burn last March, and then I started traveling again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so I'm in California, I'm in Salem, I'm in the UK, and then I start hearing stories. Well, yeah, we're planning to go to this, and um, <laughs> and then I'm hearing about a tent, and I'm hearing about coffee, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay, they're just like knocking it out of the park. They're creating a theme camp for a burn, and... Nobody needed to tell them to do it. They just, you guys just kind of ran with this. I was like, what the heck? They're knocking it out of the park there. They're getting to know people. They're creating something that people want to come to. It, I, I was watching that from a distance going, what the heck? This is amazing. <laughs> so, um, and what, what, made that, what made that happen? I think for me, we were trying to find a place, something we could offer, you know, something that we had to offer that you know, was, I guess, real and part of us and who we are. And coffee is kind of our thing anyway. And then we find out, you know, well, they enjoy it too. And I don't know. That was, for me, that was one reason for the coffee. Coffee is also, it's a medium like a cigar. They're... Yeah. You, you take a cigar and you create conversation with somebody. Right. And the coffee's the same way. It's something that we could all agree on and come together. And then, you know, the more the thing went on, the more they wanted more coffee. Right. And uh, 
Nobody wanted to get up and make it for themselves in the morning. The <laughs> night was long and wild oh, yeah. for most yeah. of them. And then they were like, coffee. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> so. Oh, definitely. And yeah. So that's, that's here again. I don't understand the acceleration. It just happened. And uh, we felt like we kind of had a place. They even made us a little wooden laser burn oh, sign that said uh, Java Java Camp, Java, Java Tent. Filter. Java Filter. Yeah, the, the theme, the theme of that was immediacy. Yes. Mm. So they make that thing for us. And, and we found out another thing, too, that if you participate in the work days, which we did go out there and help them unload trucks, mm -hmm. that uh, they'll kind of give you your choice of camp spot. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's what... Oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I was just going to say they're re reasonable people. You know, they're people, and they really have a sense of, uh, to me, of, they say, you know, rival inclusion, they really do do that well. I think they do community amazingly well. Yeah, yeah. So, And I was amazed, too, at the fact that I've said this, as old as we are, that there didn't seem to be the barrier there, and there hasn't been the impenetrable clickishness that i found in churches. Wow. So... It's huge. <laughs> Absolutely. It seems like we didn't have to ask permission to do things. And in church, you know, mm -hmm. you don't want to violate the pastor's protocol, his policy. You have to go through the right channels to get any, you know, exp do anything that you want to do. And at any time, that could be cut short. But here, they just accepted what we had to offer. Mm hmm. Yeah, this was, it's interesting when, when people start to hear about, when Christians start to hear about Burning Man events, they kind of treat it in the same way that people would treat Salem and the witches. It's like, oh my gosh, don't get near that, it may have some kind of viral impact on you, you know. <laughs> it's going to get all over you and your... <laughs> There goes Bruno. <laughs> um, so don't go near that. And yet, the closer you get to it, the more it's like. Not only are they just regular people, they, they're sometimes they're amazing mm -hmm. because they want to be in these really creative environments, and so you find really creative and oftentimes super kind people who are, are at these events, and you're wondering to yourself. Kind of like my friends from Tribe L.A. Um, There's a church that was started in L.A. back around the same time I moved to Salem. Three people came back from Burning Man, and they looked at each other and they said, and they'd been going for years, but they said, how come church isn't more like Burning Man? <laughs> so they started a church with mm -hmm. some of those principles mm -hmm. of radical self-expression, radical inclusion, and and gifting, you know, all those things became a part of their church. Um, there are some amazing lessons, even even though so often we think as Christians, oh, we want to come and bring light. How often is it like somebody brings light to us? We go, why didn't I think of that after all these years? Yeah. We've learned a lot from being around them. That's true. Mm. You know, about just basic survival, if you have to camp you know a lot of good ideas that they yeah they themselves have already been doing it for quite a while so right we look and say you know maybe we could cut some of this clutter i mean we bring enough stuff that i told her what are we going to camp for two months or something <laughs> and uh a, a lot of it we could probably do without we could but, but we also bring it because we think there'll be other people yeah like, like with the, the warm shower, mm -hmm. you know, there's usually somebody that will appreciate a warm shower right. mm -hmm. instead of going to the other one that's just cold water. Right. <laughs> so, so how do you handle the Christians that like say, um, well, what are you doing out there? I mean, what's the fruit you can show for it? Um, you know how that is. Christians are always like counting numbers or something. And 
making sure they want to make sure you've converted everybody or something like that. Right. And, you know, let them down the Roman road. Or, yeah, yeah. What do you say to people like that who just don't even get the whole idea that this thing is that that is you know it's well, a relational world of give and take out there. One one thing is that. Uh, God's not interested in microwaving as much as he is marinating. <laughs> and and also with some be prone to tell them, you know, do you do you put the gospel down the people's throat when you see them in the grocery store? You run into people every day at work, at the grocery store, at the bank, at the school, and you don't shove the gospel down their throat. Right. And why they can't see it as the same as maybe we're just planting seed by building relation. And some will say that. They'll say, oh, you're talking about relationship. I'm like, duh. You know, you're supposed to know that before, you know. Yeah. You should know that going to church, that it should be about relationship and not hitting a grand slam every time you run into somebody that doesn't act like you act or has... Totally different beliefs. You don't, you don't try to uh, take it to the wall with them. Right. <laughs> but most, uh, you know, a lot of the people are. I I hear it. I don't hear it a lot from, like church going Christians. But people are just like, you know, what what can you really do? I mean, what's the use? And, uh, you know, it's sometimes it's just best not to say anything. It's, there's no way to explain it. That this is kind of like fishing on a hot day when you have to bait the hook and put it out there and you have to wait. Right. And at some point you're going to start getting a nibble and at some point you're going to start catching fish. Right. And it's like he told them, cast it out into the deep. You've been fishing on this side, put it out there into the deep. And we've been afraid to go into the deep. Mm -hmm. And so we don't catch anything and we get discouraged. And we wind up labeling and condemning those that are different. Say, well, they can't be reached. But yet we've never put the hook out into the deep. Yeah. I I sometimes think of this stuff like in this way. The church, Christianity, in any organized sense, has had really bad reputation among people for quite some time. And I just want to be in a place where people who have only received the backside of the church at in its worst examples can see that, you know, we're not all jerks. <laughs> that, that, that Christians can be regular people too. Um, and in, in a sense, you know, Jesus needs a decent marketing plan these days because a lot of Christianity has been a really bad marketing for Jesus. Um, mm-hmm. And for the most part, most people get that. You know, they go, yeah, well, Jesus is pretty cool. I don't know about Christians, but Jesus is pretty cool. And, yeah, there's, there's always a little bit of that I have. Well, look, there's in another, my mind. another thing that we're noticing too is that or not noticing but if they find out that hey you guys are you don't go to to a church per se and yet we model Christian principle then it's kind of perplexing to them because they've even been taught to think that religion comes through the church box but here we are we can forgive we can love we can sympathize Mm. we can have compassion encouragement and it baffles them that or will when they realize we don't have a church right okay. we have a god but we don't we don't have a church per se that they've been used to and i know that's that's puzzling because i've had people before say with our feeding ministry where do you guys what church are you working out of say we don't have one so what are you doing this for us and what we're just we're doing it to help. <laughs> a lot of people not in church feed people and help people and do all kinds of things, yeah. you know. So it's kind of, to me, arrogant to think that, uh, and I'm not talking about you, but it's arrogant to think that that's the only place it can come from, you right. know. Right. 
kind of drives me crazy. The other thing is that I'm not a super saint. I'm not. You know, I'm not better than anybody else. Um, and neither am I totally unaffected by what's available on the festival, at the festival scene. But it's true in everyday life. You know, depending on which day you wake up, what's going on, how you're feeling, you know. Right. But we all make choices, and I believe in personal choice and the right to do that. I mean, to make them. And experience has taught me that some things are just a dead end, and I really don't want to go there. Right. You know, so um, my goal is to try to be the same person I am here, there. <laughs> you know, that's my goal. Right. I'm not trying to be fake, and I'm tired of being in a situation where I have to be, feel like I have to be some kind of super anything. Right, right, right. So. Yeah, church can make, sometimes make you feel a bit like you got to be mm-hmm. somebody. Yes. Yeah. Well, on that, for that reason, we have Sunday go to meet and close. We have that statement, right? <laughs> got to get your Sunday meet, go to meet and close because you got to look better on that day, right? Right. Got to scrub off all the possibility that somebody may catch you in your sin. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, when we came back from New England in 2008, I guess it would have been, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then 2009, we went back to our home church. And they saw us sitting in class, and of course we weren't. We were dressed in like Walmart clothes. We didn't have our name tags, our suits, or <laughs> our Sunday go to meet and stuff. We didn't feel like wearing that. And and the teacher recognized, hey, Paul and Joy are back from Salem. They they've been there just rebuking those witches and casting out demons. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and uh, we of course we didn't say anything. We just sat there with Mount Rushmore faces. Which perplexed them, you know. Why are you not joining in with the, the clamor? And after class, a lady approached us and privately and said, "Well, I'll bet you were just casting those demons out and rebuking those witches." And I said, "No, we really were just trying to find a way to love them." And I, it took her so off guard; it just left her with her mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that that was from being around you and uh, you Phil right. and uh, you know several things you said back then stuck with me and one was that when you were faced with a new situation that you didn't know what am I going to do you said I reread my gospels and God highlighted, highlighted some things and one of those things was that the Bible never said that Jesus was friendly to sinners. It said He was their friend. Mm-hmm. And so you set about to become a friend to those people. And that never left me. Mm-hmm. So that, I've, I've used that in my thinking in approaching this, this new venture for us is that I've got to become a friend to them. Right. And right. Not, not just friendly because they, they pick up on that. Yeah. You know, just like with the homeless, if you're not steady with them, they think, well, you're just doing, you're just getting church points or something. You know, they yeah. they know if you're sincere or not. Right. If you're really their friend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people can feel targeted too easily. You know, of course, we, li- we live in a society that makes it so that we all feel targeted all the time. Somebody's always trying to sell us something. Somebody's always trying to get money out of us. You know, it's the way of capitalism. And so they can be friendly in order to get something. And man, the last thing I want is anybody I know. I don't care who they are. I don't want them to feel like a target of my um, my desires. Right. Hmm. So, where do you go from here? <laughs> we hope and pray that you'll be back every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We pray for Priscilla quite often. <laughs> she keeps She be mechanically sound. Your wife be mechanically sound. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want to have opportunities to spend time with them apart from just the burns you know I want to do that and not for any I mean to me now from where I'm coming from to, to approach any of these 
people were coming to know with any um, agenda other than just to get to know them because I like some of them very much. I'm interested in knowing them better. And I feel for the first time like I'm part of something that I kind of care about. Wow. That feels real, you know? So. so yeah. No, that's mind blowing. And somebody is going to probably call you a heretic. I don't really care. <laughs> because of that, for the first yeah. time, she is. After, <laughs> after years of churches and church experiences, right. for the first time in a long time, you feel like you're part of something real. That's really amazing. Wow. So another thing that I've, I've been thinking lately, too, in conjunction with working with the homeless, is that even if they don't change in areas that I think they need change, what what's wrong with me still being their friend? You know? Why can't we look at somebody as, we, well, you may not come down the Roman road and go to church every Sunday, but I can still be your friend. What's wrong with that? It says Jesus was a man that went about doing good. And he didn't always get positive results. So right. the, the same with feeding these homeless. We get frustrated because they keep going back to the same things. The same destruction comes on them. But I'm thinking we're not wasting our time because what's wrong with just being a friend to them? They're probably never going to look like what we would like them to look like but they still need a friend so I, I don't think that any of it's a time investment wasted there's times when I, I wonder <laughs> but people are down and out and uh, a lot of them don't have true consistent friends so you know mm -hmm. so what they don't change they still need a friend yeah yeah Well, that was pretty cool. I think we'll close this little discussion out here. And yeah, I, I said I was going to, you know, we were going to talk about it first and then record it. But I hit the record button because you said you were going to be nervous, Paul. But you, uh, and I just that's decided deception. <laughs> that is. I totally <laughs> deceived you and let you roll. And, and there comes and the then, agenda. Then Joy caught me in the middle of it. Did you record that? Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's rolling. <laughs> so, anyway, from uh, Dayton, Texas, right near the um, unbroken spring burn and just after it, this is Paul. Say hello, Paul, or bye. Bye. <laughs> and Joy. And Bruno. Bye. <laughs> and that was Bruno you heard barking and the train that goes by regularly. <laughs> so anyway, um, Wild Theology Podcast about coming back from a regional burn. Thanks. Thank you to my patrons who help make these missional travels and these podcasts possible. Without you, I couldn't do it. God bless you. If you'd like to support this project, you can do so here on Patreon for as little as $1 a release. And at the most, that's $4 a month. Why on earth would anybody want to support us? Well, I think we're pretty cool, and maybe some people believe in what we're doing. Oh, come on, you really have that? Hmm, yeah. Don't you ever think you're just a little too weird for the average person? Um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs>